recording today's session. Can you hear me? Hello, Hannah. Hello. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. How are you? We, we're, we're doing this not in a, when I'm in a car this time. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So we're re-recording your session because you were off um, hunting for dead people and in, <laughs> in the middle of the woods. In the middle of nowhere, Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, although it was great content, so I think we'll we'll just like revisit that experience. Um, yeah, so I so I want to talk about like all the things we talked about last time. Um, for people that don't know you, which everyone probably does by now, but Cindy's a medium. She's on the Travel Channel, The Holzer Files. Um, she is training to be a psychedelic assisted therapist, um, and she does a media uh, like amazing mediumship work and. Um, we're going to talk about dreaming and mediumship and lucid dreaming and all that today. And, um, and yeah. hopefully, hopefully this time we'll hear you. <laughs> can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, good. Can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah. So I guess, so, uh, a lot of stuff, we, a lot of stuff we've been talking about today, um, about dreams and like, what's the importance of dreams and mental health and the pandemic. And like, I think for, I think, for you, um, I would love to hear you talk again about like how dreams and like vision, paranormal visions may be similar or different and um, various ways that we can interpret our own experience if we have like visitations in our dreams or, um, uh, d you know, visitations in real life. Do those feel like dreams? All this overlap between the two. Yeah, I mean, there really is a lot of overlap because the way that most mediums experience the spirit world, it's a lot more subtle than what we see on TV. I say that over and over again because it's not like I can't tell the difference between somebody who's alive or dead. That would be a very difficult <laughs> existence, you know? Um, you know? So, um, uh, so clairvoyance is the clear seeing. It's like seeing a flash of something in your mind. So sometimes people will be walking down the road and all of a sudden they see a flash in their minds and it could be an image of their loved one who died 20 years ago. And they're like, what, what the heck? Why did that just happen to me as a medium? That's a sign, right? A lot of things are signs to me. Um, so people often have these experiences and they discount them because they just think they're imagining it. So mm -hmm. it's, it's subtle. And the visitation dreams uh, are very different than to me than like a, a regular dream uh, because you'll never forget a visitation dream. You'll never forget how somebody looked. You'll never forget what it felt like for the rest of your life pretty much. And I ask people in, at all my events, um, how many of you have had dreams of your loved ones that you knew were totally different than a regular dream? And it's like, honestly, Hannah, like 70%, if not mm -hmm. more. I mean, it's it, dreaming is a really powerful way for the spirit world to connect with us because while we're dreaming, we can't talk ourselves out of the experience because we're asleep. You right, know, right. we can wake up and tell ourselves, mm, I think I, that was just a dream, but then it always sticks with us. Like, was that really just a dream? That was different. So it's the so way- So dreaming, that, like dreaming of a person is different than a visitation dream. It feels different. It feels different. I mean, mm. gosh, anybody that I've explained what a visitation dream, you know, how it, how it is, they're like, yeah, that's what I had. It, it's, it's unique. It's different. It's not like this fleeting kind of thing where you're like, I think it's like very, very real, vivid. You won't forget it. And it's super powerful. So if anybody listening has had a, an experience like that with their loved ones, um, it's real. You're real. Yeah. It, it's, it's a real experience, you know? Um, because like I was saying, you know, everybody is a medium and everybody has psychic ability. I always say everyone can play the piano. Not everybody's going to be a concert pianist. Part of my job is to awaken people to their own potential so they can have their own experiences. And a lot of times we just talk ourselves out of the experience. Yeah. 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 And did, what it, does it, so, so it feels powerful. It feels like a visitation um, does it feel, is it necessarily like a different experience than you would have of like, say, say I had a dream of my grandma and it was like just her making pie in her house, which always happened. Like is a visitation dream different in that she'll like come and say like, Hannah, I'm, I, I'm giving a message to you or just, mm -hmm. it just feel different. 
Oh, it can just feel different or just, you just know it's different. Sometimes they are giving you a message, right? Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes people get really freaked out by visitation dreams because they'll, they'll say like, for example, Cindy, my dad was there. I swear to God, he was there, but he was just staring at me. He wasn't saying anything. I think he's really unhappy on the other side. I'm like, no, that's not what's happening. Spirits don't communicate like I'm communicating with you. It's mind to mind. Mm -hmm. So if, if you're seeing an image and your loved one is just staring at you, don't think that there's something wrong. Uh, remember the feeling behind it, because mm -hmm. if you felt all this love, that's the message in mm -hmm. itself. Mm -hmm, right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and sometimes people have dreams of their loved ones giving a warning like, hey, be careful. This person's in trouble and the person will wake up and call whoever. And it's it's correct. And those are visitation dreams, but also people have premonition dreams. And that's a psychic faculty where people dream of an event before it happens. They wake up and the event happens. Mm. And people have that a lot. And that's actually kind of scary. Like those ones are scary because A, you can't control the experience because you're sleeping. Then you have this vision of something that's about to happen. Then it happens. And then there's all this stuff that kind of plays into it. Like I should have stopped it. I could have stopped it. And that's not necessarily the case. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, and, and the original, um, the story that you told us in the first time we we talked online about your professor and the heart right. issue, was that, a, was that a vision or was that a dream? That was in the awake state. I was okay. doing a reading. So I wasn't dreaming. I wasn't asleep. But, you know, I'll tell you, mediumship, it's, it's in psychic ability when you're in it. It's kind of like being half in, half out. You're not, you're not fully in. You're in a different space. So it, it almost feels like you're, in a sense, in a light sleep in a way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but I had control. It came through a message and I was awake when it happened. So, yeah. Yeah, cool. but it was still traumatic because I couldn't prevent it from happening, even though I said something. Right, right, right. Yeah, right. And then, and then last time you were talking about how people often feel like they're having like a paranormal experience and they are just feel frozen, but that's oh. that's like can like can you reiterate that in case it's mm -hmm. important to certain people? Yeah, no, this is very important um, when we talk about sleep paralysis mm -hmm. because. A lot of people will be convinced that something evil is is haunting them in the night and they wake up and they see terror and they can't move and they can't breathe. And I, I once had a woman come to me, um, this was years ago, and for a private reading. And she said, I'm not here for myself. I'm here because my son, I think there are demons around him. I'm like, well, okay, well, what's happening? And so she was saying, you know, every night he goes to sleep and he, he's terrified. He, he wakes up, he can't move. He sees things um, floating around him. And I, I said to her, I said, have you ever researched sleep paralysis? Because I feel like that's what's going on. And, you know, this kid got to the point because he had such a, uh, you know, an issue with sleeping that he really was depressed because this is happening constantly. Imagine that you're like 16 years old and mm -hmm. you're having these terrifying experiences several nights a week. Um, and she, she brought him to a sleep specialist. It was sleep paralysis. And it, you know, that changed his life because mm -hmm. it wasn't paranormal. He wasn't, you know, possessed. Demons weren't haunting him. It was, it was a sleep disturbance. It's physiological. So mm -hmm. anybody that's had those experiences, please know that it's likely not paranormal in mm -hmm. my experience. Mm -hmm. It's, sleep paralysis also there's interesting stories about people having seizures and having like paranormal experiences which may be you know something valid but also should get treatment <laughs> well, right, well right because well i mean you're you're the you're the doctor but um deja vu right and and stuff like that isn't didn't people think deja vu is like a seizure or something like that I, I, yeah there's been a, a lot of overlap with like seizure activity and and like you know uh Mm -hmm. like paranormal uh declarations i think I, I think it is interesting in certain cultures that those are the people that have had, had have had the visions that are you know real but also you know seizures can cause brain damage over time so i hope it's not what's happening to me i need a brain scan because <laughs> i'm really operating in Come this on space down to philadelphia <laughs> thanks hannah <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, the, see, the thing is, like, if the experiences are validated, if somebody's having this experience and then it, later they find out it's true, I mean, you, you're not making that up. It's happening. How does it correlate to brain damage? Okay. Like, you know, because people have had brain and traumatic brain injuries and come out and been super right, mediumistic right, and right. psychic. And they're like, I didn't have this before. Now I do. 
Right, right. Or near death death experiences yep. that totally change things. Right. So it's like yeah. there is there is an overlap. It's not clearly one thing or the other, but um it's in, it's a very interesting area of like research for sure. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um so um uh let's see. What are what were the other things that we tried to talk about and it was hard to hear oh, last time? Yeah, we were talking about um like control C- can you control certain things, right? So I was talking about how um you know, regular dreams or visitation dreams you can't control those those are often spontaneous they happen lucid dreams. That was uh, what we were talking about. Um, I had lucid dreams when I was very young and, and I was always, um, so amazed. And like, what, how am I able to control my dream? I'm in my dream. And I said, I want to fly. And then I'm flying. I'm in my dream. And I said this, and then it's happening. And then you wake up and you think you're awake, but you're not, you're still in the dream. And so I've had dreams like that my entire life. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. lucid dreams really fascinate me. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we were talking about too, again, like being in the media, mediumistic state in the, when we're awake, I mean, it is, you do have control, but you're kind of half in half out. So you're kind of dancing between both spaces. Uh, and it's really interesting. I mean, just, I don't know if I shared, I've shared this yet, but uh, you know, there was a, a time, I think it was about six years ago, I had the flu. I was so sick and I had that lingering cough and I had a huge event in California and I couldn't cancel it but I couldn't stop coughing. I was like, I have no idea like how That's I'm going to do this. It was, it was, I was so sick, but I got on stage. I, I couldn't cancel. Uh, and I got on stage and for 90 minutes that I was working mediumistically, I had zero symptoms. I mm. felt totally fine. The second I stopped, they came right back. Mm. Hmm. Weird. So, so that's fascinating to me. Yeah. Right. Am I outside of myself enough that I can't feel the symptoms or am I controlling my symptoms with my mind? I mean, I don't know right? Yeah. Really interesting. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, but you can't do that now with COVID, right? Like you can't be like, I'm just coughing. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. I'll just figure it out. With I my, know, right? Control it with my mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. So also, I guess the thing is, is um, so our whole last hour was learning how to lucid dream. And um, or just discussing like different ways, techniques to, to, to become lucid. And I do think it's, I think it's interesting to think about like, okay, so you can lucid dream to like deal with nightmares, to face like dark sides of yourself, to like, um, to question the nature of reality maybe. So you have like less of a grip on it and like that can c- create some freedom, but also I, I, something that we didn't talk about is like, can you bring people in from, you know, the other, you know, people that have died or people that you wish you met? Like, can I bring in someone that, you know, lived 2000 years ago and I want to- Hey, maybe. I mean, maybe I need to learn how to like, learn how to lucid dream like on command and test it out because that's interesting. I mean, if you can say in a lucid dream, which I've done, I want to fly and then I'm flying. I mean, I, I think that there's something to think about with that. Right, that would right. be a really cool thing to to experiment with mm-hmm. because then people could connect with their loved ones on their own. Right, you right. Know? Like I've, I've said this before, I think with you, but I always say my job as a medium is done when nobody else has to come see me anymore because they're having their own experiences. Like, because right. it's... A- <laughs> so Jared wants us to just like see if we can put our finger through our palm all day for like 12 hours and then see if like the, you you definitely lucid dream that night so you know maybe that's you just assign people I'm test it out Jared I'm in I'm in <laughs> you know the other thing we were talking about too in the in our last talk was about um you, you know being on a journey and can you bring loved ones in and, and request to contact loved ones on a journey mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um you psychedelic know, journey journey yeah or, yeah, yeah the yeah, psychedelic yeah, journey yeah, yeah and i think i don't know if i'm even well i guess i am the right person to ask because i'm a medium but i talk to dead people all day so for me it's so normal like i don't mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know but that's something else um that i've seen in in the space where people are on journeys and they feel the presence of their loved ones they they feel them so intensely they know like that was my uncle my mom was here i right i think mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. that's so powerful mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. they're feeling it and and i've always said um the feeling is most important because you can you know say something to somebody they can take it into their mind but if there's no feeling involved they're not internalizing the experience when you feel it like that it's super healing 
Right. And I think that that's why it will be so cool when you're a psychedelic therapist, because mm-hmm. essentially if there is just a certain amount of like inhibition or there's some like block people block themselves from feeling messages from other worlds or um, you know, even if it's just like their memory of a person that they're like, they're pushing away Mm -hmm. um that when that happens in a journey if you can like work with them through that i think that would be really amazing yeah because people you know when you have trauma and there's a relationship where there's a lot of trauma and and imagine somebody's in a in in a psychedelic space and they start to feel that energy coming towards them i think the initial response is to to maybe become afraid or say no you hurt me but Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. You know, I've never experienced where in that space where somebody's come through to do any further harm and to allow somebody to receive that healing is really, mm-hmm. it's really therapeutic, mm-hmm. right? So, right. And like grief overlapping with trauma, right? Like if there was some right. trauma with someone who died, what do you do with that? And I think that's, I think in, in therapy, it's really hard for people to work through those issues, right? If someone died and it's like, well, that person hurt me, what do you do? You can't write them a letter that they'll ever receive. And it, right. it's like, there is so much there that you could work with. But they do receive it. And just so you know, um, if you want, if anybody wants to write their loved ones a letter, they receive it. Because I've done events, <laughs> you know, where like somebody will come through and be like, hey, um, I saw the letter that you wrote me. Like, so just know you might yeah. not, not get immediate validation. So never mind on my part. <laughs> <laughs> Write a letter. <laughs> but I, I think that people do like, okay, so there are people that would never write a letter, right? Because they're just like, yeah, like my dad was traumatizing to me and also died. And like, I can't do anything about it. Why would right. I go to therapy? This person's gone. Right. And right. there's like various ways you can work with that. Yeah. I mean, and and that's, that happens a lot. I mean, it's, Mm -hmm. it's man. And, and, you know, even in a personal experience, you know, my, my mom passed away, like we hadn't spoken in, in some time. And even as a medium, I mean, I think I had a little bit of an advantage because I knew, okay, my mom's fine, but still it was even having that experience to connect. And I did connect. It was still really hard to to have, because I still have the guilt behind it. Like I should have done this. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, well, I'm excited to work together. That's I know. Sure. When is this happening, <laughs> okay, Hannah? Okay. <laughs> I need to hurry up and like get a, through school. Get through school. Maps is like getting their FDA <laughs> approval for MDMA. That's happening <laughs> soon. Come to Philly, or we'll meet somewhere else. Um, you can scan my brain. It'll be fun. <laughs> I'll just buy an MRI. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah we it. we could we could. Um, uh, Let's see. Oh, can you explain this concept of traveling to other places in dreams? Like, what's that experience like? Oh, that okay. astral projection. I don't know anything yes. about these things. So, astral projection is when you can, you know, leave your body and go somewhere else. Um, you you do know, that? People, people can do that in meditation, like in mm-hmm, deep meditation. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, I don't know that I astral project. I think in the, the psychedelic space, I felt it way more. Mm-hmm, um, mm. Remote viewing is something different. That's a psychic faculty where you could be in the awake state and, and project your mind to a place in real time. This is how like psychic investigators, when they work with the, the authorities, a really good psychic can sit down um, have a case file and then know exactly where the body is, where, you know, the crime happened because they they can go to that space. So that's re- like remote viewing, seeing oh, things cool. in real time. Right. Um, it's pretty amazing. So, but that's like, like, you're like, you're, uh, going, you can go back in time in that case. Well, that, right. That's, there's that, but you could actually go in real time too. So okay. like, say the police are like, we don't know where this body is. The person it could be past, right? That's one way. Or they could go in real time and see things. If say the, the, the crime happened a year ago, the psychic can still go in real time and see what it looks like today. If it's, if it's in land and, and something's changed with the environment mm-hmm. or whatever, they can mm-hmm. see it. So mm-hmm. it's, it's interesting. Cool. Cool. Yeah. And uh, anything else that you think is relevant with dreams, lucid dreaming, dreaming, mediumship, COVID, yeah. Life in general. I think, uh, so like random story is that um, I'm now in a, like downstairs in my house because upstairs when I was, um, where I was filming last week, um, our house got like 
li- lightning struck like on the sidewalk next to her house and like blew out the, <laughs> the wi-fi and i was oh, like no i feel like cindy might think that was interesting <laughs> i was like in the house it's like it's like you know lightning thunder and then just like psh, like a big spark and i was like weird and and now it's just like that's crazy wi-fi is gone so i don't know you that's know. pretty crazy hannah you're so powerful. Lightning wants to strike you. You're, you're, yeah, it's a sign. Everything's a sign. It is, right? No. Hopefully, um, or else just like bad luck. I don't know. Oh, hey, I think you're on fire, Hannah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. You do. <laughs> Thanks. I don't know. I mean, um, you know, it, it, with all the stress and everything that's going on with COVID, I mean, like I was listening into the end, the tail end of your last talk and, and like, I've been having crazy dreams too, that I think a lot are just stress related. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and people, a lot of people I've talked to have been telling me I've been having the craziest dreams. Right. Um, and dreams are powerful. And, and, you know, I think, um, they can be scary too, you know? And so I think it's really great that you're doing this and having this conversation about all the stuff that's going on, because not only are people in trauma, the whole world's in a trauma. Now our sleep's being affected. People have insomnia and you can't sleep. You've got all these, this stuff piling up. And then you finally fall asleep and it's like you're trapped somewhere or, you know, Mm -hmm. other like weird scenarios. It's like how, how our minds are really processing this fear. Um, I think it's like Robin, the first person who was speaking, um, she was saying like, oh, you know, you, like we're not allowed to go out. And then they say you can go out and then you go out and you're like, why? I don't, I don't want to be out here. <laughs> you know, it's like, know. you're like, yeah, I can go to the supermarket and then you get to the supermarket and you're like, ah, like, ah, I don't want to be in the supermarket. Like, ah, get me out of here. You know? I know. <laughs> so like, I know. And you know, just uh, in, in, in my world, um, you know, we all have an aura, right? So it's an energy field around us. And I think, uh, a couple of things maybe that could be helpful to people is to like Epsom salt baths are great for cleansing the aura, things like that. Pull your aura in, have a mental visualization of if you're going out, like pull your aura in because a lot of times we have our aura so expanded, we're not aware and we're walking around and we're just touching everybody else's aura and it's so energetically overwhelming. We don't know what to do with that. It creates Mm -hmm. anxiety. Mm -hmm. So I think these visualizations of if you have, if, if you have anxiety going out, you know, take a deep breath and envision yourself pulling your aura in, or a lot of people envision themselves being, you know, protected by light, whatever works for you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, But mm -hmm. I really think visualizations are helpful um, because we do have an energy field around us. And if you're not aware of your energy field, it it can be very difficult. Right. 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 Especially if we're being, we're going into the world thinking that everyone is like, like you know dangerous in some way yeah. that it's like uh even just the concept of like okay I'm wearing a mask and I'm like th- only this big you know I'm not like necessarily sharing everything with everyone around me I think it'd be really healing I don't know if it protects you against COVID but it's well I don't think it protects you against COVID <laughs> but you know um but, but, but who you, knows you know who knows who knows <laughs> I don't know. It's crazy. It's, it really is. I mean, I've never been agoraphobic in my life. And, and there was a time after the, the first lockdown, I went to the grocery store and I was having just, just crazy anxiety. And I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, I couldn't wait to get back into my apartment, which was the last place I actually wanted to be. Right. Right. Um, right so it's, it's affecting right. yeah, all of us. Right. And, and I'm, I'm a busy body. I'm right. very social and mm-hmm. I, I'm, you know, mm-hmm. we're all getting hit. So mm-hmm. yeah. And then you go out and you're like, am I doing it right? Is my mask on right? Am I like talking, cl- am I too close to the person? It's like all these social rules that you're like, I'm six feet from you, but is that, is this like weird? It, the whole thing is just, I think there's so many levels of anxiety that this causes that, mm-hmm. that I do think um, just like noticing that our dreams could be totally bonkers is important for sure. Yeah, right. Because it's it's our way of processing what's going on. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But if you're having a dream of your loved one and you remember it and it's super vivid and, and you know they were there, believe it. Because that's very comforting in a time like this too, knowing mm-hmm. that your loved ones are with you. Can I share one really quick story? Yeah, before yeah, we get yeah off? go for it. So um, uh, I was in a car accident. Like it was like about two and a half weeks ago. I've never really been in, in a big car accident in my life. And, um, and you know, um, 
I, I got this new car the day before. I was like, I need to get a new Jeep. I, I'm sure I traded in my old Jeep. It's a Wrangler. I want a hard top. I was like, I'm going to do it. It's time. So I go get a brand new Wrangler. I'm, I'm packed with all my stuff. I'm driving to California because I'm going to be staying in California for a few months. So I'm stopped in traffic on the highway. Um, and this woman just behind me just didn't stop. Like she wasn't paying attention that traffic was not moving. And, and so she rear ended me at like between 60 and 70 miles per hour. So I'm, I'm okay. Right. Um, like a little back stuff, but anyway, so the Jeep spins around, I get out and I'm doing the accident report and I'm just like, I can't, I'm in shock. And I look at my temporary insurance card because I had just purchased the card the day before. And the expiration date was January the 4th. 2021 and my mom's birthday is January the 4th. So to me, that's like a big sign because yeah, yeah. it had I been in my old car, my old Jeep, the soft top, I wouldn't have fared as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. it, 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 that's a really dramatic example, but I mean, I, I, I hope people are open enough to like receive the signs from their loved ones and to believe them because really they're around us and we really need that during this time and they mm -hmm. really are with us. So, mm -hmm. um, pay, pay attention to the signs, you know? Yeah. Thank you, Cindy. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for having me. I love being on these talks. Yeah. What's the next topic I next know. time? What is it? <laughs> <laughs> well, next month is psychedelics, um, for PTSD. Then we're going to do, uh, relationships, um, in COVID, which well, relationship well, count me out on that. I'm <laughs> as single as they come. <laughs> well, but also just like, uh, you know, various ways of dealing with relationships and, um, and yeah. also like roommates and people that, um, I think people are having a lot of, I like as a therapist, I'm getting a lot of people writing to me now being like, I need couples counseling or I need roommate counseling or, you know, everyone's like, ah, I'm stuck in a house with these people. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and then we have a few other ones, so we'll have you back and, um, maybe every time, you know, you just have to I'll figure come out, you'll have to like want. figure out a way to talk about the thing we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. I can do psychedelics and PTSD. I can nice. do that one. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. All right, cool. cool. Yeah. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Anna. Bye everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.